Hey guys, how's it going? For those of you new here, my name is Lathan and I'm currently a master's student at Cambridge University. I took a little break from YouTube the past couple weeks because my coursework really ramped up and I've just been trying to balance class assignments and my research project and it's taken up pretty much all my time. But um, my lectures have ended and those are really the things that were just a huge time drain. So the last week I have here at Cambridge is purely protected time to work on my assignments, study for my exams, and basically end the semester strong. So today I wanted to make a quick video showing you guys how I study at Cambridge. And basically I want to show you guys my favorite place to study in Cambridge, which is the University Library. And I want to talk to you guys about um, a study technique that I think is really effective and that I use all the time called Active Recall. And I want to show you guys how exactly I go about doing this. So without further ado, um, I'm going to first show you guys um, what the university library looks like and give you guys a tour around. Hey everyone, so I just got back from the library and I couldn't really film in there because it was there's just really no place to talk without disturbing people. So I just decided to take up my camera, film around, um, and basically get to show you guys what the inside of the Cambridge University Library is like. So now I'm back home and I want to tell you guys about a study method that I find most effective, which is called active recall. So a little bit of context about the exam that's coming up for me. Um, I have an exam on Wednesday that basically tests um, essential epidemiology concepts that we covered in the past 10 weeks or so. And the format of the exam is a short response exam. So there will be like a bunch of short response questions covering all the basic concepts of epidemiology. And the key to this exam is that it's more about actively retrieving and recalling information than it is critical thinking, for example, like a, a math test would require. So the method of active recall is predicated on writing a ton of questions or studying by asking yourself a ton of questions, as opposed to simply summarizing notes from lectures or a textbook. So I'll just jump onto my laptop and show you guys how it works. So here's my active recall guide, and as you can see, it basically is a study guide that covers the entirety of the epidemiology curriculum. So you can see that I've broken it down into major concepts uh, with sub-concepts um, down below. And basically, um, this is not really um, active recall in the sense of its logical extreme, meaning just a pure list of questions. Um, but there are two reasons that I wanted to do it this way. The first is that uh, the exam overall doesn't cover a ton of information, so simply I had the time to write down all of the concepts um, and basically um, have all the information there as opposed to just a list of questions without the answers written down. And the second reason is that um, actually for me, structuring information in this way with sort of headings and subheadings um, allows me to better um, actively recall information because it better allows me to cluster concepts together um, for easier retrieval. So I believe active recall is absolutely the best way to study effectively. There's a ton of evidence in the literature and another Cambridge YouTuber actually, um, Ali Abdal, uh, made a really good video about why it's one of the most effective study techniques. The reason it works is that the brain is geared towards retrieving information as opposed to storing it. So if you ask yourself questions, you're, you're forced to recall information and over time, you build those neural pathways that will help you more effectively obtain that information the next time around. Also, I'd argue that active recall promotes active understanding of the material as opposed to passive memorization, because when you hear a question, you're forced to logically recall the set of 
associated answers that follow. And this will build and strengthen connections between uh, conceptual knowledge and understanding. And the last point I wanted to make about active recall is that it's not easy. It's, it's It should feel difficult because it's akin to going to the gym or playing a sport or doing some other task that requires practice and repetition. Active recall is hard. You should feel strain and you should not necessarily be relaxed and just go through the motions while you're performing active recall because that's not what it takes. For instance, one study found that students who took harder subjects and found them harder to learn actually retain information for longer periods of time and were able to score higher on their exams in those subjects. So now I want to show you guys an example of how I practice active recall. So if we jump back into my laptop and look at my guide, basically um, what I would do is, you know, I have about 10 or so pages of um, concepts uh, that will be covered in the exam. And basically, um, if I were to go through it, I'd start with the first one, let's say, so an ecological study. And I'd basically ask myself the first thing, which is, what is the study design of an ecological study? And I will not look at my notes and I'll try to actively retrieve that information from my brain. So, okay, let's see if I can do this. So what is the study design of an ecological study? Um, it's a study that looks at geographically defined populations and attempts to measure the ec ecological, hold on, and it attempts to measure the association between the ecological exposure and an aggregated outcome. So basically that process of trying to recall my information without any assistance from the notes is what will really strengthen your understanding and retrieval of that concept. So I'll basically just go through the entire guide and repeat that question and answer process. And for things that I don't know or for things that I'm unable to retrieve the first time around, for example, you know, this, this topic was a little bit tricky. I would highlight it in yellow or, or some color, for example, so that I know, um, one, I can basically document um, my progress. Uh, so I can basically document what concepts were trickier to understand initially. And it also lets me know what concepts I should focus my active recall efforts on. So in this case, with this nested case control and nested case cohort study, I'd pay more attention to how, um, or I'd pay more attention to what exactly it is that I'm not remembering and what I should focus my efforts on understanding. And after I've sufficiently practiced active recall so that I'd be able to retrieve most of the information necessary for the exam, I will practice active recall on an actual practice exam. So, of course, this depends on whether your professor or your course um, offers available previous exams for students to practice on. So I'm definitely lucky that I have tons of practice exams to basically test my knowledge. Um, but basically, I will sit through a whole practice exam and take it under test-like conditions. So no notes, fully concentrated, and under time constraints. And this is to simulate the actual test taking experience. All right, so that was a quick video showing you guys one of my favorite places to study at Cambridge University, the university library, and also me waxing poetic about why I believe active recall is one of the most efficient study techniques there ever was. And I really hope you guys take something away from this video, like looking up active recall afterwards, um, incorporating it into your study methods, you know, whatever, because I truly believe that this is how to best understand and learn material for the long term. So I hope you guys um, have the best of luck on all your exams and finishing the semester strong, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.